Hey y'all, Craig. Just heard Sydney Powell say that she's about to release the Kraken. <laughs> Yes, please. Release the Kraken. <sighs> this election, I, as if we didn't expect it. But wow, I mean, <laughs> you can see the two sides so clearly. But it's amazing. You know, all the media seems to be all in on Biden here. Oh, there's nothing to see. All of these court cases are being rejected and you Trump supporters are delusional. As if we hadn't heard that before, you know, from the same folks that brought us the Russia collusion and Ukraine and, you know, endless, you know, impeach 45. Like we can even listen to these folks anymore. They're just insulting us at this point. And it's not amusing because the signs of fraud are everywhere. And, you know, it's hard to even imagine what the claims are at this point. It's, you know, everything from the Dominion computers to, you know, people just, well, blocking Republicans out from the, the polling places and, and stuffing a bunch of ballots through the machines. It's hard to know what's real at this point. Um, but of course, we're being reassured by everybody, including most all the midday Fox people. It's done. You know, President-elect Joe. <laughs> Come on, man. No, you know, he's not. And, you know, wasn't it Joe that said in the first debate that, you know, he would wait until, you know, all the votes were counted and, you know, it was a secure election and he was going to do the right thing. And, you know, <laughs> how, how many hours did it take for, for Joe and all the rest of the Democrats to go, oh, well, we won. It's a mess. And I'm not looking forward to the next couple of weeks, really. I mean... It's, it causes so much anxiety, you know, and it, why, right? Why do we take it so seriously? Because I really, if, if this is all let to slide and we just accept the results of this, obviously just fraud ridden election, we're doomed to ever have a, a decent fair election again. You know, this is the make or break time. We've, we've been told about this. I, we've been expecting this for years. You know, I know that there are lawyers sent out everywhere ahead of time. And, you know, obviously the Democrats before the election were trying very hard at, at getting these mail-in ballots accepted, you know, and I'm not talking about the absentee ballots, you know, that, that, you know, you call in and request. No, you know, the ones that they just send out ballots to every address that's ever had anyone vote from it and you know just expect everything to go honky-dory and peachy and there won't be you know any fraud whatsoever because people are just looking for an easy way to vote as if voting was hard you know and man I mean it should be a little bit of effort you know but anyway you know so what do we hear at this point I mean we're hearing of you know, the ballot stuffing is stuff like, well, yeah, they, they go out and they, they farm votes. They, maybe they're getting them out of old age homes. They're getting them from communities where these ballots are just sent out and they're in huge bundles. And they can just pick them up and take them around and get people to sign it. But that wasn't enough. You know, it, it, there's every indication that Trump actually won this, this election by a landslide. Um, but they, you know, the fix was in from the very beginning, and I think they found out pretty quickly, but not quickly enough, that they didn't have enough. Uh, and they had to find exotic ways of, of creating more votes. And so, yeah, of course, you know, there's, you, you see all these down ballot votes just disappearing, right? You know, oh, it's only a vote for Biden, only a vote for Biden, you know, ballot after ballot. And, and it's pushing the numbers all over the place. 
you know, you're seeing just crazy numbers from, from counties that you would expect it from. You know, I nothing like their neighbors, <laughs> you know, just in these really left power counties. And, and a lot of them are known for fraud. So, you know, it's kind of crazy to, to hear so many voices you know, just absolutely shut this thing down and say, no, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing to see here. Just accept it. I said, well, uh, that hasn't worked for us yet, right? You know, just accept it. Well, no, because every single time the Democrats are caught lying. And I'll say this, Trump has yet to mislead us. So if he does this time, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be offended by that. And, and I think that's unforgivable. But how about the folks on the left? How are they going to feel? You know, let's say that they find out that, wow, there was a lot of fraud. I mean, just you know, hundreds of thousands of votes and all over the country. And, and you know, let's just say that this stuff all turns out to be true. How are the Democrat voters going to feel when a bunch of them lose their vote? I'd be awfully upset. You know, I imagine they will be. And, you know, they'll probably blame Trump first, you know. Orange man bad. But eventually, it has to dawn on some of them, wow, we've been lied to. We were lied to about Russia. We were lied to about the Ukraine. We were lied to about all this, this tabloid news on Trump. Huh, maybe, maybe the Republicans have been right. Maybe Trump's not so bad, as if any of that's going to happen. But it should, if all this is proven to be true. And of course, we have to have the time to find out. It's not going to take that much time. A lot of the investigations are already taking place. Yeah, a lot of these cases have been thrown out of court, but there's hundreds of cases being brought. And, you know, the, the real fact of the matter is, I mean, when you really boil it down to like its most basic content, that in so many of these, these battleground states, they have created laws, well, rules where they can't create laws, right? It's up to the legislature in these states to change voting laws. The legislature didn't vote for these laws. These laws were pushed in through courts, leftist courts. So it's not going to stand much scrutiny. You know, once it comes down to it, and they start to show examples of how, oh, Republicans were, were shut out of these polling places, or, or let's say shut out to, to any amount that would be helpful. You know, if they let a couple of them in, that's, that's really, that, it's not enough. That's not significant enough. You know, there should be plenty in there. Um, you know, were they upset because there are a lot of Republicans upset that they weren't allowed in there? I, I guess so, you know, but sorry, you know, that's elections. That's how we've always done it. And especially because they said, with these extreme measures taken with all these mail-in ballots, that there had to be extreme measures taken to make sure those votes are secure. And they all agreed to that. But then lo and behold, that's not what happened. They didn't allow it, enough Republicans in there to oversee these the, the ballot counting and, and the removal from the envelopes and all that. So, you know, if you weren't up to something, why in the world would you try to hide something? It doesn't make sense, um, and especially you see that you know even Zuckerberg and wife had, had donated so much money to to just fluff the votes in in some of these key cities. You know, there's just more and more evidence coming out constantly. So that kind of feels good as a Trump voter, you know, but it also feels bad because I, it I hate to think that this country has has come to this. We expect better. And, you know, I know the Democrats hate Trump, which is a strange policy position because, you know, that's about it. I mean, what else do you know about, oh, we're going to do this here? We're going to fix health care. Well, they totally screwed it up last time, right? It's 
The cost has gone through the roof. Insurance costs way too much. If you go to a doctor's office, I, most of the people that work there are, are filling out paperwork. They're not doctors, you know, and that's required because it's, it's so complicated. And, and so many small doctor's offices have closed because of that. They can't afford all that staff, and it's hard to get those people. And, and that's why hospitals, you know, have to consolidate. And, you know, it's, it's, it's screwed up the whole system. A lot of good doctors have left the system, you know. That's what they did, I and mean, that's what they want to keep doing. I, what else? I, I'm trying to think of, you know, oh, we're going to work on infrastructure. Well, they've, they've never been wa willing to work with Trump on infrastructure. Um, I don't know. They want to defund police. You know, I mean, I can't think of any great ideas they have. You know, it's all, all powered by, well, you should hate Trump because he says horrible, disgusting things. And, you know, if you listen to Trump any length of time, he's a, he seems pretty decent, man. I mean, yeah, he said some outrageous stuff. Oh, people hate his tweets. How would you tweet if every time you try to do something, people are standing in your way that are supposed to be working for all of us? It's It's got to be the most frustrating thing in the world. And I'll say this. I mean, those outrageous tweets get the press's attention. And then they're forced to report on things they wouldn't otherwise even bring up. So it's, it's like this whole vote, you know? We're being forced to look at things that we would have never looked into because it's, it's grossly out of whack. You know, I think they absolutely believed that Trump was gonna lose by a, a large amount and they just had to make sure. So they, they fluffed the votes everywhere they could, you know, dead people voted, people who moved away voted. They stuffed ballots back in the machine over and over and over. They filled in a bunch of ballots with just Biden and no other, you know, Senate races, House races, anything else. They jammed those in the machines. Then they found out late at night, election day, wow, we're still really short. And so they went to even more extreme measures. Uh, you know, how else do you explain all of this? We, we've never had votes take this long, you know. And we haven't seen just so many instances of fraud. And it's funny. I, I, I just hear this over and over and over. There, there's, there's no fraud. There's no fraud. It's like, even anybody that's been around elections at all will admit that there's always fraud. Always. The question is always, is it enough fraud to make a difference? You know? We have a long history of elections. We have a long history of fraud being discovered. Real fraud. People really have gone to jail, lost their positions. You know, this really happens. And just like this scenario of if everything is found to be screwed up and we don't know how to, how to fix it, then it's going to come down to the House of Representatives to, to vote. And... You know, overwhelmingly, even though the House is majority Democrat, the states are majority Republican. So it would probably go Trump's way, right? Um, and that's happened before. None of this is unprecedented. All this stuff has happened. You know, again, the founders were brilliant. You know, they really anticipated as much as they could. Again, because they came from places where they've seen all this go to hell. Just like what we're trying to do right now. And we have to demand otherwise. I, I'm sorry, Democrat friends, but, you know, really. The interest is in our elections more than the party at this point. Yes, I want Trump to win. But if we find out that, no, all of this is a big story, I will be very relieved. You know, I'd love to see Trump there for another four years, but he started something that isn't going to stop. Uh, if we're ever allowed a decent election again. But it really, I mean, what the thing is at this point is we have to know for sure that our elections are secure, that we can have confidence in them. I mean, why are these machines, you know, from a company out of Canada that has offices in Colorado, or it's uh, Citus is in Delaware, or 
well, it's really software that was developed by a bunch of communists that hate us, you know. Uh, why are we using that? You know, we certainly have the technology and the ability to build reliable voting machines right here in the good old USA. And isn't it interesting that so many counties would elect to use a machine that other states, like in Texas, they found these things to be utterly unreliable. You know, it's really interesting. And then you start finding out that, wow, you know, there's, there's a lot of politicians and politicians' family members that own pieces of this company and, and other companies like it. Isn't that interesting? You know, listen, if the people who are so outraged by what they think Trump did, you know, from impropriety and bad dealings, um, if they're so outraged at that, then perhaps they'll be outraged at this because this is real. The allegations against Trump are ridiculous. You know, it's the same old tire cliched stuff over and over. And believe me, after all the investigations that poor fellow has been through, they didn't find any of that stuff to be true. They had to actually make things up. And we know it. We've seen it. And it's been frustrating as hell because we see the left lie, lie, lie. I mean, everything from Fast and Furious to Benghazi to Hillary's server to the dossier to the Ukraine phone call to Hunter and the Biden kickbacks. And, you know, just I, ad nauseum. I, no one ever gets in trouble. But it's all been revealed. I mean, we've seen it. The evidence is right there. And it's frustrating, you know. So maybe, I mean, you know, I guess if things were going to go the way I really wish they'd go, wouldn't it be great to find out that, wow, these folks not only have been cheating horribly in this election and they've used software and everything else available to do it, but, wow, here comes the Durham investigation and, wow, all these people are in serious deep trouble and, wow, look how they try to screw up this whole country and look at all the stuff they did prior. That'd be great. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. But we know bad stuff's been happening. And it's just kind of ironic that my buddies on the left for the longest time have been just ranting over how horrible Trump is for all of these reasons. And if their people end up being horrible, for all those same reasons, you know, again, I would think they'd be horrified and maybe, you know, they'd start listening to us a little bit. Yeah, probably not. I like the debates, but if it's outright fraud, none of us should settle for that. I mean, you know, this is America and we're, we're supposed to be way better than this. There shouldn't, there shouldn't even be the thought of fraud. It, you know, it's a simple process, really. And we've made it more and more complicated on purpose. I mean, you've heard me say this so many times. Government is bigger and more complicated to hide things. That's how it always is, right? The bigger it is, the harder it is to see what's going on. The easier it is for people who mean to do bad things to get away with it. Otherwise, well-meaning people try to make things as small as possible so you can hold people accountable, so people can know if they're doing a good job or a bad job and be directed. You know, small things work better. That's why in private business, they're always trying to find efficiency. But not in government. It's not about efficiency at all. It's about growing your project, you know, whatever it is you're in charge of, growing your responsibility, growing your influence, Growing your ability to get paid to, <laughs> for your influence. Joe, Hunter, Biden family, Clintons, <laughs> Obama. I mean, all these folks, they've made buckets of money from the time they left office to, well now, they're raking it in. And it's not because they're getting paid huge amounts of money for speaking engagements or their books. Nobody buys those books. 
<laughs> There's not even books on Joe, is there? I mean, what would it say? Joe rode the train. <laughs> you know? Oh. Well, so here we are. Still counting. And Cindy's releasing the Kraken. Hope the Kraken can do something. <laughs> you know, I'd really love to see something happen here to, to make me feel like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure of what I know, but still, it's tough, you know, it's tough. You just constantly, everybody's beating on you saying, no, you're an idiot. That's not true. And it's like, ah, you know, this coming from the people who have just been lying to me for years and years and years, they're telling me I got to listen to them now. I mean, the media, I'm supposed to trust the media. I'm supposed to trust politicians. And people are, oh, well, you know, well, even Fox says so. And it's like, so what? I mean, ever since Rupert died, his kids are a bunch of liberals. They're screwing it up. You've seen it. All of these guys is, oh, you know, you get these pundits out of the gateway. Guy, well, obviously, Trump should. Listen, a lot of the folks you thought were your friends aren't, okay? If they're inside the D.C. Beltway, they get paid to be experts. And the only reason they're experts is because they got inside information. And the only way they get inside information is because people leak information. The only reason they leak information is because they get paid for it. Or they get a little extra power nudge or something, you know, I mean, that's how DC works. And people get huge lucrative contracts to do all sorts of ridiculous things. Like, this is all stuff we know. We've, been, we've always known how bad it is. And all of a sudden, we're supposed to act like, now nah, it's all up and up. No. No, it's, it's worse now than it ever has been. And we know it. We know how much they hate Trump because he's disrupting the whole thing. He's screwing it up for all those people who would get inside information. That's just not coming out anymore. You know, those people are supposed to help dictate policy and push things in their direction, and that's just not happening anymore. They don't, they don't have their voice they used to have because their voice is irrelevant. Trump works for the American people. He knows what we need. We know what we need. And it's really simple. We need a government that's looking out for us not selling us out, a government that allows us to prosper and grow internally. You know, the more we do inside America, the more prosperous we are. We always have the tendency to share that wealth with the rest of the world. We bring them up. We have helped more people come out of poverty than any other cause in the history of the world. We need to continue to do our good work. The Democrats are not allowing us to do that. They tell you they do. But, I mean, just look at all the good work of the, the whole Clinton organization, right? No, didn't do it. No, no. And the good work shouldn't come from our government. The good work comes from our people. People know what kind of good work they want to do and how much they can give, and they'll do it. The government just splices up our money and gives it out to whoever for whatever reason. It's not an oh, oh is well reasoned either, right? Again, this is all stuff we know. But charity begins at home, not at the government. And I think the whole concept of letting the government take care of charity, take care of the world, is, is short-sighted because, well, one, the world can take care of itself for the most part. You know, what we need to be is a big, shining example. But two, you know, anytime you just give something to somebody, do they appreciate it? Usually not, you know. It's better to give them an example. Give them a hand up. Give them, you know, some technology that would help them. Not a new tax. Not some newfangled thing that doesn't make sense for them. Get them involved. They can tell you what they need, right? We can't dictate what the whole world needs. It's just like education is in the U.S. now. The federal government can't dictate what everyone needs. I, the kid in California needs something different than the kid in the Midwest, different than the kid in Florida. You know, it's just, you know, it's not, it's not the same everywhere. And local knows better. 
So, I don't know. I'm hoping we can continue down that path because I mean, Trump was doing it. He was, he was giving us back the power, taking it away from the government, eliminating those endless wars, you know, the big military industrial complex, which is, you know, that's why you see these, these generals and all these military people that don't like Trump. You know, no, oh, he's, you know, yes, Trump's building the military, but what they really want to do is build these ridiculous bombs that cost ridiculous amounts of money that they just shoot out all over the place to basically threaten people that are trying to strong arm in some deal somewhere else. And they make all kinds of buckets of money over that and they don't really do anything. We don't really advance our cause, you know, think about it. Back, Obama shot off more missiles than anybody and, and let the entire military just atrophy and waste. That's what they're into. Just, just turn on the money machine. Don't worry about actually protecting America. And that's what we get with those guys. And you know, look how they're carving up the country already in, in anticipation of taking it over. You know, and you see them bickering away and who's going to do this and that. And you don't hear a whole lot about how they're going to do good for people. It's all about how good they're going to do for themselves. What, who gets which power? How can they punish people? And you know, wear the mask. <laughs> Which, by the way, <laughs> what happened to the flu? Oh, well, the virus is coming back. Oh, or could it be the flu? <sighs> anyway, here we are, counting down. Thanks for listening. Let's hope the Kraken wins. <laughs> and have a great day. Thank you.